Oh, excuse me. Uh, oh, hello. Search interrupts. Uh, he's got one of them clever leads that expands <laughs> as the dogs... Who, um, who are you from? Well, we're from the BBC. Oh, BBC? Yes, radio. It's not television, there's no lens. Oh, right. Yeah. Just a microphone. Oh, sorry. Oh, what are you talking about, or...? Well, <clears throat> we're investigating vampires. Vampires? Do they no. exist? I never heard of them. Oh, well, the only vampire I have is my wife. <laughs> is she a pain in the neck? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, girl. Present John Shuttleworth's Open Mind. This week, Vampires. Oh, and as the spooky theme tune fades out, let me say, welcome to the show. This week, I'm delighted to say that the petrol money has come in, finally, <laughs> from the BBC, mm. allowing us to travel further afield than we normally would. Normally, the show would come from my house in Sheffield. Mm. This week, <laughs> we've come all the way to Whitby, North York, <laughs> to investigate vampires. That's right, you heard me correctly. Because, you see, Whitby is a hotbed of vampire activity, apparently. Well, we'll soon and, find uh, out. Oh, if it's Ken, please wait to be introduced. Uh, no, you're all right. Sorry. Uh, it's just I'm getting a bit cold. Oh, yeah. You know, we're outside in, in your car. That's right. Ken's just Freezing. told you what I was going to say, which is that we're in my Austin Ambassador wire edge mm. on a cliff top. <clears throat> it is a bit nippy. Mm. Um, Why don't you turn your engine on, John? Warm it up a bit. Because the heater is not uh, functioning uh, properly. What? Yes. Oh, now he tells me. Well, that's it, not good enough, John. Uh -huh. You know, we could have gone in my car. My heater works fine. Maybe it does, Ken, but the petrol mm. money, to be fair, was not allocated to your vehicle. Oh. Now, oh. regular listeners to the show will know that normally we telephone a celebrity for candid advice on that week's topic of investigation mm. uh, on Ken's Magic Mobile. Because Ken has a hotline to all the stars, don't you, Ken? Well, yes. Unfortunately, normally. Ken has left his bum bag, which contained his mobile phone, uh, at home. I have, yes. We can't, therefore, contact a celebrity. Sorry. But fret ye not, mm. because we'll be chatting to my wife Mary <coughs> and her friend Joan Chitter, mm. who have come with us today. They're in Whitby at the moment. That's right. Uh, shopping. Mm. We'll also be going on a walkabout to... Ask the residents of Whitby if they believe in vampires, mm. or if indeed they've had any recent sightings. That's right. But before that, a regular item. Um, oh. Ken, are you ready? What? Because it involves you. Oh, does it? Just play the jingle. Yes, right. Yep. Mini cassette oh, recording. You've caught me on the hop here. I'm not really ready for you. Well... And you've still not introduced me, John. I'm going to, Ken, after the jingle. Oh. And stand by. Yeah, all right. Ken's computer corner for internet advice on vampires, ghosts, and UFOs. Just click on Kenny's mice. Yes, indeed, it's my very great pleasure to welcome my next door neighbour and sole agent, Mr. Ken Worthington. Hello. Greetings, Ken. Uh, hello. Yeah. You're in Ken's computer corner. I am. Aren't you, Ken? Yes. All spelt with a K. <laughs> Clever. Is that uh, clever with a K, Ken? Hey? Uh, oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. I understand. Yeah. We're just trying to uh, be light-hearted, because pretty soon, I would imagine, the mood will be tense. Mm. Yeah. John, can you just now. plug in the AC adapter for my laptop into your um, cigarette lighter socket, please? Uh, no. But I need to, John, so I can power my laptop for Ken's computer corner. Well, I'd rather you didn't, Ken. What? Because you're going to drain the battery on my car. Oh. It's, it's not recharging very well at the moment. Right. Ken. First your heater, now your battery. This is not good enough, John. Mm. You've got me working in cold, cramped conditions. Yeah, um, I know. It's amateurish. I'm sorry, John. I'm close to jumping ship, John. Oh. 
Well, I do beg you not to do that, Ken, please. <laughs> and you'd be silly to, oh. because it'll be even colder outside the car. Mm. <clears throat> oh. Tell you what, Ken, put your laptop away till mm. later, and um, we'll warm ourselves up with a rousing new jingle. Oh. So I've written some jingles, Ken, have on you? the keyboard, which mm. I have here in the car, yes. on battery mode. <laughs> Let's play one right now. Mm. Uh, and this will help remind the listeners that they're uh, listening to the show. Mm. John Shuttleworth's open mind. Oh, oh yeah. I love it. Do you? Can I do one, please? Well, we should really leave it a while before the next one. Oh, but, um, please, John. Oh, go on, then. Oh, thank you. Stand by. John Shuttleworth's open mind. Oh, oh. no. Okay. What happened there? I don't know. Ken had gone crimson, and I'm sure that if a vampire had been walking past at that moment, they would have been drawn to Ken's cheeks. It was time to begin the investigation in earnest. So, while Ken had a nap, I went for a walk along the cliff path and talked to members of the public. Um, excuse me, I'm John Shuttleworth, uh doing a documentary for the BBC about vampires. Mm-hmm. Um, are, you, are you from the area? Yes, yes, live just round the corner. Yeah. Have you have you uh, clocked any vampires? In, in Not recently, no, no. Ever? Not I'm aware of, no. Right. There's, <laughs> a lot, there's a lot of vampires in Scarborough, so I understand. Really? <laughs> Why is that, then? Well, there's not a lot of love lost, is there, between Whitby and Scarborough? Is there not? No, because no. that's where the council is, of course. Oh, see. So Whitby, Whitby always gets the short end of the stick, or so it seems. Yeah. The investigation was in danger of being hijacked by a political yeah, activist. Nice to meet you. And you. Gonna ask them if, uh, <laughs> yeah. It was time to move on. And my next interviewee had less of an axe to grind, but was her mind open to the phenomenon of vampires? I have, I have actually got quite an open mind, but... Yeah, uh, I have. I uh, have yet to experience anything, put it like that. Yeah. Well, Whitby's the place to experience vampires if, if, if they are around, isn't it? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yes, with Brian Stoker and uh, all yeah. the history that goes with it, Whitby's very much... Um, uh, it attracts a lot of people, especially when it comes around to the goths' time and vampires. Yeah. And... Do you like goths? Very much so, yes. I have no, no quarrel with goths. I think they... They look fantastic, and Do if you? I was a lot younger, I would probably, <laughs> no Oof. doubt, follow the goths. Really? I think they look unkempt in appearance. Oh, no, not, <clears> all. <throat> not, not all. It's a lot of the cure, isn't it? It, it combs his hair up, doesn't it? That's right. He's yes. a goth, yeah. Yes, yes. You know, my daughter flirted with the goth look, but she's gone back to, um, she's got, like, Brittany. She looks like Brittany now. Mm. She's I think much better. They all go through this black period. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was nearly a teddy boy, you know. Are you? <clears throat> Yeah, but my mum wouldn't let me have any winkle pickers. <laughs> Jam. It's a bit pricey. Mm. And you can damage the furniture, can't you, if you're angry? You kick a sideboard. I would say you'd damage your toes more than anything Oof. else. Yeah, they were a bit... Uh, they pinch, don't they? Are you coming, Jan? Oh, sorry, love. That's my wife. Uh, better be off, then. Thanks a lot. Yes, thank you Nice, nice talking to you. Thank you. <clears throat> Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. <clears throat> Hello, love. You were talking to her for a long time. I was finding out if she's got an open mind. Mm, I'll bet you were. <laughs> I returned to the car with Mary and Joan Chitty, where we found Ken on Vampire Watch, with good reason. Oh, John! Oh. Hello. Oh. Oh. Is it John and Ken? Oh, he knows her name's Ken. Oh. Uh, what? Uh, would you mind going to the rear of the vehicle, please? Uh, is there a problem? Ken, what are you saying that Go from? on, you heard me. You tell him, Ken. As I thought, I can't see his reflection in the... Um, rear-view mirror. Oh. It must be a vampire. That's because uh, you're at the wrong angle. Because uh. you're too small and you're in the passenger seat. Oh. You have to readjust it. Right. Oh. There, can you see him now? Oh, yes. Sorry, John. Mm. It's all right, Ken. Panic over. Mm. <clears throat> Sorry, young man. Not a vampire. Sorry. <laughs> but we're just, um... <clears throat> Sorry. To inconvenience there, we're just trying to ascertain whether, in fact, you were one of the undead. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you think that? It's, uh... it's because you'd be apparel, sir. Mm. You've got a, a top hat on and a, a cape and a frock coat. Yes. Yeah. Why are you dressed like that? Mm. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm Mark Gross. I'm, I'm here to meet you. I'm 
chairman of Whitby Dracula Society. Oh, oh. Uh, I'm sorry, John, I remember now. I made, I made an appointment to meet you, haven't we, Mark? You have. Ken Worthington. Pleased to meet you, Ken. And you. Mm. Oh, no, his, his hand is warm, John. He's a mortal. Yeah, and you're an idiot. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> While Mary and Joan remained in the car, showing each other the tops they'd bought in town, even though they'd closely scrutinised those very same garments at the time of purchase, Ken and I went for a walk with Mark Gross, who, as well as looking like a vampire, clearly knew a thing or two about them. Here, at last, was a real chance to further the investigation. Uh, Bram Stoker was inspired to, to write the story while he was staying in the town, Oh. And um, the, the town itself features quite heavily in the novel. Um, mm. On the sands opposite it, is, is where Dracula first came to, to the town of Whitby. And, and, oh. and it, it didn't come in, in a man form. He came in the form of a large black dog. Oh, did he? <laughs> why? Yes, why? Well, vampires are known to have the talents of shape-shifting. Oh. But Stoker was also playing with a local myth of the bar guest, which is a large black dog. Um, that would steal steal away souls. So, it was, it, in a way, it was a little bit of an in joke, but it also, um, at the time, helped to put a, a sense of the supernatural and a sense of time and place into the novel. No, oh, no. Oh, get nearly fell over. Mm. He's, he's got his Cuban heels on. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> they're not ideally suited for these kind of cliff paths, to be honest. Oh. That's right. I've got trainers, which are ex-army issue. Yeah. I got them off the open air market. Oh. They're for a fiver. Fiver. And oh. the, uh, the lad who sells them, he dresses up as a soldier. Oh. Even though he's not really a soldier. Oh. Give me a good grip. Yeah. Well, yeah, that man. I have as well. I'm also wearing jeans. Oh. Normally I wear um, phone slacks, but I've got some jeans that we got from a catalogue. Right. I'm wearing noon pants, Mark. I'm oh, sure the wind's getting up, Mark. Oh, it is. It is. It's very yeah. blowy. I don't think it's a storm. I think it's just just a, a pleasant sea breeze, John. Yeah. Pleasant sea breeze it may have been, but it was sufficiently strong to cause Ken Worthington severe problems. Oh. With his Cuban heels providing no grip, plus the parachute effect of his noon pants, Ken was separated from the main group on several occasions. Ah. But I didn't mind that, because he was getting on my nerves. And Ken's failure to establish an internet connection on his laptop had severely undermined the investigation. I'm sorry, Jim. Oh, Ken. Mark, do you know anything about computers? I'm afraid I don't know an awful lot about them at all. I, mm. It's just a big typewriter with a telly on to me. Just to me and all. I'm in trouble here, because I'm supposed to be finding websites of places to visit in Whitby. Yes, you were. Can you <clears throat> recommend anywhere we should visit? Well... The, the Dracula experience, which is um, certainly very interesting, oh. and, and Whitby Abbey itself has a new visitor centre, and there's uh, lots of information there again about the writing of the novel uh, Dracula in Whitby. Mm. But I noticed, Mark, <coughs> as we drove in, the Abbey looked like it was in a bad state of disrepair. Mm. I mean, is it really worth a visit? Well, mm. I mean, some of the walls <laughs> are still quite uh, substantial. <laughs> yeah, but they look like they need pointing up, and they yeah. do. Yes, rendering. <coughs> Would you not well, say? Well, it, it's an ancient monument, John. It's, uh... Yeah. I'm not so sure about that one, Ken. No. Doesn't sound up to much, does it, listeners? Whitby Abbey. What makes it worse is that one is required to climb 199 steps to reach it. Very poor planning by the Scarborough-based council. Yes. That bloke was round. He was. Yes. We didn't bother with the Abbey. Instead, we visited a fish and chip shop. There's a few of those in Whitby. How I love fish and chips With mushy peas and those battery bits That some call bits and some call scraps We sat in the car and ate the on our laps Oh, Mary had a cod, Joan had a place And my pickled onion had a very tart taste It made him wince and screw up his face. I loved it though, Jam. That onion was ace. Good. I'm glad to hear it, Jam. We shared a giant bottle of pop and we drank it down till the very last drop. The meal we agreed had been a delight. Mm. The 
The chance to grab forty wings. Mm, did. Everybody, oh how we love fish and chips with mushy peas and those battery bits that some call bits and some call scraps. We sat in the car and we ate them on our laps. Yep, we did. Is it free, Doc? No. <laughs> no. Mm. You, have to, you have to pay, Mary. Well, of course you do, Joe. Yeah. We're not coming, love. Another time. Hmm. Hey, you winked at me, Mary. Oh, Joan Chitter. Oh. Come on, let's go and have a game of bingo. Oh, yes. Ladies, are you not coming to the Dracula experience? Uh, no, thanks, Ken. Mm. I came to the seaside to have a good time, mm. not to be scared witless. That's right. Oh. See you later, Ken. I'm off to win a teddy bear for my grandson, Liam. Oh. I say. Uh, John, are you ready? No. Welcome to the Dracula experience. I'm frightened, John. Oh. Walk carefully. Oof. Do not run. No. To run implies a chase. Yes, yes. Do not stop too long. That may imply the chase <coughs> is over. Right. Oh. 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 The, the severed hands everywhere. Oh, John. Horrible. I don't like it. Oh, what's that? It's oh, really dark and gloomy. It is. Ken, where are you? I'm here, John. <coughs> John! Yeah, stay close to me, Ken. I will, John. Yes, stay close. Oh, oh. John! Ken, where are you? Ken had fallen into a dark abyss, but when I tried to retrace my steps and get help, I just got lost. But now what's walking over? It appears to be drawbridge. It's gone dark again. Ken? Oh. Oh. Somebody's just dropped a bit of fabric on my face. It was becoming increasingly scary. And please remember, as the next security guard for a sweet factory in the Rotherham area, I do not scare easily. Oh. Yeah, all right, you made your point. But worse was yet to come. Oh. There, lying prostrate in a coffin, with eyes closed and arms folded, his face pale and blood upon his cheek, was my friend, my sole agent, and my next-door neighbour. One person, you know. It was Ken. You may think the investigation is now over, because I'd found a vampire, case proven. But my work was far from complete because Ken had to be destroyed. A wooden stake had to be driven through his heart. But at the camping shop, they only had aluminium pegs. I couldn't find a preacher or any townsfolk with lanterns, you know. And then I saw a charity shop. So, naturally, I went to it. I do, I do, yeah, light blue. Yeah. <coughs> what do you have on Sunday? Excuse me, have you got any books on um, How to Kill a Vampire? <laughs> That's all. Uh, no, I don't not? think so, no. No, no I'm no, sorry. No. It's just that I'm, I suspect my friend um, might have become a vampire. Oh, all right. With the doctor experience. Well, you better go into a drugstore. I mean, they might be able to help you a bit more. Yeah, them. right, OK. Oh, I'll sorry. just take these, um, Leo say. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Winnie for that one. Oh, you don't, oh she's good, isn't she? Winnie for that one. Your pen, don't I hope you don't think it's insensitive of me buying records at such a time, but... They were very good value, and um, 50p each, and uh, I was still very concerned about uh, Ken and his dilemma, as we shall now hear. But in the meantime, I need to find ways in which I can uh, make my friend um, have a peaceful end, because uh, I found him in a coffin. <laughs> oh, go on, no, I'm not joking. No, the lid came down and there's, uh, there's blood on him. on him, he's asleep, he's got his laptop uh, pressed close to it so I can't put a stake through him because... Oh, can't you? Well, because you'd uh, invalidate the warranty. Oh, 
Oh, would he? If he damaged the laptop, I can't Take prize his it. Off, I it? can't. It's like it's got rigor mortis. It's well, cut his arms. Well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> well, it seems a bit drastic. Go into the chemist opposite and they'll be able to help you. They'll know yeah. far more about it than we do. We don't know anything. We Is there a, do you know I can buy some garlic bread? From because they don't like garlic, do they? Well, there's bottoms along there, I'm sure they're safe. Why don't you buy red. a few garlics and string them around your neck, you know, like a, a Frenchman? Hey, that's a good idea. <laughs> but, um, I pre you see, I don't like garlic, but I like garlic bread. Oh, dear. Right. Because, uh, it's, well, it's taken the nation by storm, hasn't it? That's it. Do you not think? <laughs> <laughs> well, a few years ago, everyone was suspicious of it, and that pink stuff drama slapped. <laughs> Ladies laughed, they must think I'm daft. They can't comprehend Ken's match a tragic end. Except it's just the beginning, for Ken's condemned to roam all night and spend all day asleep alone. Imagine that's some people's idea of a good time, isn't it? <clears throat> a stake driven into his heart would let Ken depart. But that seems a bit mean and just a little extreme. I could make a chain of garlic and wear it around my head. But I can't stand garlic Unless it's in garlic bread Which I love, as we all do It's taken the nation by storm Oh, no need to fret I'll simply get a garlic baguette From a retail When I came out of the supermarket with my newly purchased garlic bread, I stopped to listen to a local busker. <laughs> oh, fantastic, lad. There you are. Oof, sorry. Where's your hat? Well, busker should have a hat. I'm not really busking, I'm just so, you know. Practicing it for the new, new tune. Oh, that's very, very good, lad. Show great promise. Thanks. You should um, enter one of those talent competitions. You know, like Pop Idol or something like that. Yeah. I think you'd, you'd, I think you'd get into the final eight or something. You'd, you'd, well, you never know. Give it a go. As it happens, I've already, already done something uh, like that already. Oh. I should say. What's not, that? Not Pop Idol. New faces. You, you, you're too young. Similar. Um, it, was, it was actually a program called Fame Academy. Fame Academy? Yeah. I remember that one. So how did you fare? I was second. Really? I was robbed. What's your name, lad? Alistair Griffin. Alistair Griffin. Great pleasure to meet you, John Shuttleworth. Oh, nice to meet you. I remember you now. But uh, I think you possibly lost because you didn't have as much hair gel as uh, Alex Parks. It is a theory that's been put forward. Yeah? Before. Well, you must be kicking yourself. Yeah. Uh, it looks like you haven't got that much in now, actually. It looks a bit dry. Get it spiked up. Fancy meeting a pop star in Whitby? Though no, not such a surprise once you learn that Alistair is a local boy. We were exchanging showbiz anecdotes when Ken Worthington suddenly emerged from the Dracula experience, pacing the street opposite in search of fresh victims. Foolishly, I had only bought one garlic baguette. You know, if I bought two, I could have formed a cross and kept him at bay. But uh, with no preacher, no wooden stake, we were vulnerable. What could we do? Alistair, I've had a brilliant idea. You've got your guitar, uh -huh. I've got my keyboard. Let's sing a religious song. And as Ken okay. approaches, if he is a vampire, he's going to wince, isn't he, and uh, foam at the mouth or something. I guess so. Because they don't like holy things, do they? No. Singing Nun, do you know that one? No. Dominique, and he can he No. No. Um, Kumbaya? Kumbaya. No, that's a campfire song. Nah. It's no good, lad. John! Do you know uh, Jesus wants me for a sunbeam? Oh, sorry. Actually, no, do I really? 
Good talk, Lewin. Show me. What are you doing? Quick. Uh, hey? Morning is broken. Ooh. Morning is broken like the first morning. Hey? Blackbird has spoken huh? like the first bird. Oof. No, John. Now to tune. You lads good, though. Praise I need some new talent on my rostrum. Instead of recoiling from the wholesome lyric, Ken seemed to be drawn to it, and within seconds was offering to sign Alistair to the Worthington International New Talent Agency, or Winter for short. However, any dreams I had of Alistair and myself being stablemates were short-lived. Look, Ken, it's been lovely talking to you, but I, I've got to go. I've got to get my car back to my mum. Oh, have you? Yes. What car is it? It's a car. Oh. See you then, Alistair. Yes. Nice to meet you. Cat. Sorry, I have to go. Yes. Come back. Yeah. Cat. Ken. Shut up. Cat. Sorry. <sighs> Look, I've got something for you, Ken. Oh. The moment of truth had arrived. If Ken really was a vampire, the taste of garlic bread would send him running a mile. Oh, he's eating it. Yes. I'm always hungry after a nosebleed. I beg your pardon. Well, when we became separated, mm -hmm. I had a panic attack, and that brought on a nosebleed. I thought it best to have a lie down and recuperate. The only place I could find was an old coffin. I must have fallen asleep. <sighs> so you're not a vampire after all? No, no, but see, oh, oh yes, yes, yes I see why I'd um, yes. think I might be one. But no, no, Hello. not a vampire. <sighs> Just in time. I'm uh, my back. Mary and Joan Hello. have arrived with more fish and chips. Oh, right. lovely. Here you are, Ken. Thanks, Joan. Did you find any vampires then, John? Uh, there was a suspected sighting, Mary, oh. but mm. it proved to be a false alarm. Oh, dear. Yes, and mm. I think uh, we have to conclude that vampires do not exist. Mm. I've had an open mind for the duration of the show, but now my mind is closed. But, John, yeah. I see you've got your organ out. Yes. Can I sing that jingle that Ken tried to sing? No. Well, please. All right, Joan. It's very tricky. It's very late in the day now yeah. to be doing it. I the show's know, about to end. Mm. Go on, but, love. Uh, oh, go on, then. Thanks, John. Good luck, Joan. John Shuttleworth's open mind. Oh, don't bite me. <laughs> nice one, Joan. Did you like we, that? Hmm? We yeah. did, Joan. Hmm. We enjoyed it thoroughly. Yes. But there... We really must leave it for this week. Our thanks go to Alistair Griffin, Mark Gross, uh, the ladies from the Sue Rider charity shop. Might pop back there, actually, get a few more bargains. And everyone else that we met and talked to in Whitby, North Yorks. Uh, join us next week when we'll be exploring the phenomenon of... Uh, what is it next week, Ken? Uh, fairies. Fairies. Mm. Oh, no, Ken. Don't be silly, Ken. <laughs> John Shuffleworth's Open Mind was written and performed by Graham Fellows, with additional material by Dean Wilkinson. The producer was Dawn Ellis.